Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another infamous channeled video. Now this video is a topic I never wanted to focus on, never wanted to look at, but for some reason I started to pick up the energy of this this morning when I was out hiking. It just popped into my head, so I thought I would go with it. I'm going to go at it a little bit untraditionally, at least as far as my videos are concerned. I'm talking about a murder of an entire family, a mother and three children, one in utero and two outside. I'm talking about the Watts family murders, and I'm talking about Chris and Shanann Watts, their babies Bella and Cece, and the little baby in utero, Nico, who was approximately 15 weeks at the time of his murder. So Christopher Watts, who is born on May 16th, I'm not clear of the year, some say 84, some say 85. I've been seeing two ascendants, Leo ascendant or Scorpio ascendant. I'm going to say Scorpio rising and I'm also going to say Aries moon. His wife, Shanann, is a Capricorn and she has a Aries moon as well, Taurus rising with Saturn in Scorpio in the seventh house of relationships. I found that very interesting along with her Mercury retrograde. She was supposed to have clear sight in this life about her spiritual path which I feel is part of the reason that the stuff that happened to her happened is because she wasn't focused on the spiritual. And that goes all the way back to when she's a young girl at the age of four. So when I'm looking at her energy when she's a four-year-old child, I'm seeing that it's implanted in her head that she very much wants to have this idealized version of family and children. Now, I'm not going to focus on the children so much, but what I can tell you that I picked up is they all crossed over with an older lady with kind of short whitish hair, um, a grandmother figure crossed them over, but I feel like she was a babysitter from when Shanann was a young woman, okay? A young kid, not woman, baby. Uh, I feel like this woman babysat Shanann in her life, kind of a little bit of a rounder woman, um, short and white hair or graying hair is what I saw. And she's very much playing with the kids. I see Shanann on the other side sitting with her son in her lap. And I see him grow the way that he would have grown had he been born on this side of the veil. I really do see that. So all of the kids and Shanann are together. The woman who watched Shanann when she was little crossed her over onto the other side. They went straight over. So none of them felt what was going on other than what happened up until the point that they lost consciousness. That's always what people ask me. What do people feel when they pass over? Of course, I can't say for sure because I'm on this side and I'm not passed over and I'm not recalling it from the other side to somebody, so I can't really tell you. However, my experience with picking up on energy and information from people who have crossed over, those that come back to this side, as in they wake up from their situations, so if they get shot, they survive. If they get hit by a car, they survive. Um, whatever happens to them, if they have a heart attack or a stroke and they survive, that is when they feel the pain, the pain that everybody's afraid to feel at the time and the point of death. So I'm safe to say that these, these three and four baby inside all crossed over, all crossed over, very karmic relationship. That Saturn in the seventh house with Shanann in her natal chart basically says her relationships are extremely karmic. Now, the seventh house is the marriage house. It is the house of relationships, all relationships we have, business, partnerships, all kinds of things. But it's very karmic when it's placed there. It means there is karmic repercussions for the relationship. You have to look at the other aspects to Saturn and you also have to look at the sign that Saturn's placed in. Now hers is placed in Scorpio. That's why I think Chris's rising sign is Scorpio because Saturn would have been on his ascendant and this would have exactly played out, although he should not have taken the action he did. But this is so interesting because when I was looking at the energy, so I'm going all over the place with their energy. It's taking me in many different directions. I wanted to say this when Chris was younger, I'm, I'm just going to say this. For, it sounds very strange. He's completely responsible for what he did. 100% responsible, no excuses whatsoever. However, Christopher, when he was young, kind of went through the world in a hypnotic state. This is how I'm seeing him. Kind of um, unaware 
of the reality of things in front of him. You could call it self-deluded. I'm going to take it up a notch and say there's an energy freeze on the way that he sees things. And I'm seeing this. I believe that Christopher was born into a family that practiced a type of religious belief system that isn't in the traditional sense. And I'm, I'm really saying this here. I was shocked when I picked that up. I don't know that Chris is aware exactly that he comes from that because there's a certain element of dissociation, detachment that's always been with him. He's always been detached as in not connecting to what's going on right in front of him. We could say that he is a person who can't see the reality, so he chooses to put on rosy colored glasses and view the world from that perspective, which I find, if it's not in the murdering sense, it's, I guess it's up to you how you wanna see the world. But this man, basically from the age of three on, is suffering from dissociation. He he detaches on an emotional level from the circumstances that are going on right in front of him. So there is a part of him that steps out and something else steps in. You could call this a form of spirit possession and I'm not even joking. I'm talking before he got married. I'm talking before he went to ninth grade. I'm talking before he got his first job, before he left his home. I feel that this goes directly to the parental raising of this child. No, I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying that I feel the family philosophy in life, the way that they viewed the world, the way that they viewed the hierarchy of human beings, of the spirit world, of their religious practices, is what caused Chris to dissociate from certain thoughts and actions. The reason for that is the thoughts and actions that ended him in jail are what were encouraged underneath. It sounds very strange, but I'm almost going to say that I feel his family background was involved in a larger circle or group of people that practiced certain things in order to gain other things. I'm trying not to say it on YouTube here so I don't get kicked off, but I actually feel that this is what was going on underneath. I feel that the rituals that they were involved in early on in Chris's life caused this. Now, they may have put him into an altered state so as a child he wouldn't cause a fight, run away. I mean, try getting a child uh, just a tr into a traditional church you know, you, you know, sometimes you have to threaten them. You can't go out on the weekends. You can't do this. I mean, a lot of little kids aren't going to kind of join the family for, you know, prayer circles and all kinds of things unless they're raised in an environment that is more cultish. And I feel that I'm talking about that with this. Now, here is an interesting marker in time. Hmm, how can I word this? Poor Shanann, well, let me talk about her for a second. What I see with her is she very much felt like she was behind the curve as far as getting things. So she really wanted to be something. She had this thing where I want to be something. I want to be successful. I want to achieve. I want to, I want to be able to create things. I want to, you know, a good life. I want to have a family. I want a good looking husband. I want, you know, to have babies. I want to have it all. Now, all you women out there know that this is impossible. You cannot have it all. If you've had kids and you've had to work, you know, you can't have it all. I mean, unless you have a private chef and a maid, but you know, who does? So she wanted that kind of a lifestyle. And this was kind of put into her head through her family. The weird thing is I would assume it was through the father, but both of these people, Shanann and Chris had mothers that kind of steered them down a different path than what was right. Shanann was not on her spiritual path. She was not on it at all. She was on the, um, well, she's an earth sign and Chris is an earth sign. So they're both on the earth sign path, money and things that we can gain and how do we appear and what do we have and how do we make our living and how many kids do we have and how good is this? Okay. So she was on this path. She loved her children dearly, okay? There's been a lot of things that have been transposed in the speaking about Shanann and Chris from what I could get. A lot of Chris's family transposed information onto Shanann. In other words, Shanann was a pain in the ass 
in the sense that she spoke up for what she wanted. She was strong and she was direct and she said what she wanted. She was a freaking, you know, strong woman. However, there's blame being projected from Chris's family onto her that had nothing to do with her and had to do with their son. However, he didn't see his own actions in it. So both of them felt like they were victims. Both of them had attachment disorders and both of them had abandonment disorders. This is what I see. Now, Shanann tried very hard to keep the premise of her family and the way that it was like, um, I needed to appear this way, so I'm going to keep working until I can get what I need. So she put old fashioned hard work into her relationship. If I make enough money, if we go on trips and then she got pregnant with baby Nico. Now baby Nico is interesting because I can see his contract with her. Baby Nico on a spiritual level came through for Shanann. Okay. The second she got pregnant with, with baby Nico, Shanann's thinking was, if I have another baby, he will love me. And that's not an uncommon thought. It's what you could call an anchor baby, but I don't mean like crossing the border and having a baby in a different country. I mean anchoring the person to the husband that they want, that they're with, or the man that they want, and keeping the connection through a child, through the act of creating a child. I totally get that, but here's the kick. Baby Nico, and this is the information I got, came into Shanann's body, into her energy field to help her go through this karmic experience. He technically, even though he wasn't born, was energetically here to protect her through this last part of her life. It was a gift to her. So the fact that she got pregnant and as sad as it is to her family and Chris's family that this baby is gone, that baby came to Shanann specifically because the actions were going to happen that her husband was going to take. The baby came into her belly. So 15 weeks before she died, so she was 15 weeks. And if, she, if they all died on August 13th, 2018, so you go back to July, I'm trying to go back, that's four weeks. So go back the 15 weeks to the conception of the baby and that's when Chris started thinking about how to get out of the relationship and that's what I'm getting exactly. So that little baby came into her stomach to help her cross over, okay? So this was a karmic gift from this soul that would then become her son and is her son on the other side. Sounds weird, but that's what I'm seeing. So the baby came in, Shanann was pregnant. So whatever month, I think that kind of goes back to around Chris's birthday sometime in May. I can't add backwards, but add backwards for me. I think it's sometime around there. That's when he started to plan this. Now, unbeknownst to Chris, who dissociates, detaches, isn't grounded in reality in any sense of the word, not at his job, not when he talks to his friends. He has the appearance in a robotic sense of being there and focused, but he's not. He comes in and he comes out. It's almost like he's in a hypnotic or altered state. And I'm not kidding about that. He was that way his entire life. He kind of had a very aggressive female role model, the mother I'm speaking of, very aggressive. And he kind of retracted back from that, but there was other things going on in the family. Now, take the environment that they're in. Take where they died in Colorado. Take the environment of the surroundings on the day that his children went missing. It was obvious to me that he did it, but... I think it was obvious to everybody that he did it by the way he was talking because you'd be freaking hysterical if your pregnant wife and your two daughters went missing because they're so young. You would be hysterical. I'm hysterical when a pet gets out the front door, let alone my babies and my wife. However, whatever the reason was, Chris was um, detached from it emotionally because he was disassociating from it right then. Now here's the kicker. There was a mistress involved in this whole circumstance named Nikki. Uh, the mistress, I can't even think of her last name, whatever her last name is, the mistress. Okay, we're going to call her the mistress. Now everybody wants to bag on the mistress. I guess there's a ton of mistresses and misters out there that have affairs with people all the time. People are always having affairs with married men. And for some reason, especially women, tend to think that they're going to go into a circumstance out of their own 
need, their own dysfunction, their own family, their own circumstances, whatever they're replaying, and they're going to get that man to love them. So if the man leaves his wife and kids and comes to them, then they're that's a notch for them. And some people like dating married people because they can't get married again. It's kind of like dating a pregnant woman. She can't get pregnant. Okay. So there's some element of that. However, this Nikki is entirely different. I'm going to say this. Not all mistresses are this way, by the way. Some mistresses are just young women, older women, selfish people who want what they want and they want sex with another person. And that's what they do. Okay. So some mistresses are like that. This mistress of Chris Watts, entirely different, okay? Entirely, and I'm going to say it again. There was a disassociation from the human frame with this mistress, and there was an energy that came with her that went after Chris Watts. That sounds really strange. This was a karmic, karmic test between good and evil for Chris Watts and Shanann allowed herself to be the reflection of that. And I'm truly getting this. It sounds bizarre. Chris had a choice. The mistress, once he accepted that, once he agreed to be with her, the mistress became his downfall. Not because he wanted to kill his wife because he wanted to get that woman over there. No, this woman in and of herself was not in human form when she went after Chris Watts. She stalked him. She went after him. And I'm really getting that. No offense to anybody out there, but I'm getting that. She put her mind to him and there's some element of energetic manipulation. Call it whatever you want. I feel she stepped out. Someone stepped in and they went after Chris. It's a binding tie from a past life. So what happened is Chris thinks he's in love and you know, whatever he's doing whatever men do. And he's like, I'm in love. And he's all happy. And it's all of the hormones. Love can be like an addiction. However, in this instance, it can be like a spiritual possession. This woman was targeting him, conjured together, bound together in order to ritualize his marriage. And I'm not joking. Everybody connected to the whole circumstance of the Watts family murder, everybody connected to it, the investigators, the police, the families, everybody, there are elements within the context of all of those people who were aware of what was going on in a spiritual level, in a, mm, the other side of the veil, the, the, the good versus the bad. And I don't even want to put it that way. I literally mean the good versus the bad though spiritually conjured, sent to Chris to create a circumstance with which to feed off of. The death of this pregnant woman, complete creative energy in the stomach of a baby, right? The baby's in your stomach. You can't get more creative on earth. There's nothing you can create that's more creative than creating a vessel for a soul to come through. The two baby girl daughters, okay? Those two baby girls right there, their baby kid energy and their innocence and their beauty and their warmth and their joy and they're just their little kid energy. Take that out of this world and you can feed off of that. So there is behind the scenes things going on ritualistically that are making this a big public event where people can enjoy, not us people, because I find it despicable as do you, but other people connected to the groups that investigate. So that would be the police, the FBI, I don't know, whichever groups investigate, the authorities. And then you have the Watts family, you have Shanann's family, and you have this Nikki girl's family, the mistress, she was deliberately targeting him and not from a human perspective. I'm trying to get that point across. This is a spiritual possession. She puts herself into a state of, I must have him. He picks that up in a hypnotic state and follows in tandem, okay, both. People aren't seeing that. This isn't just a regular guy's evil, goes crazy, murders everybody in the family. This is stepping out of oneself in the human sense, stepping to the side and allowing something to come over the body 
and to allow you to create something that is chaotic. And in that chaos, the beauty, the innocence, the creativity that is lost is what the people who enjoy chaos will feed on because people are going to cry, people are going to weep, it's going to outrage the nation, it's going to outrage the neighbors. That energy in its combination, whether you knew the family, the victims, the murderer, the mistress, it doesn't matter. The energy of that focus is ritualistic. Our energy at our disgust pushes that in and we begin to, you know, all of us, our energy unites like a big tidal wave and the people who have adorned themselves in the situation in order to watch, to see, to see it played out, kind of like a sick joke, they enjoy it. And that is truly what I, I really feel that this circumstance with this couple and what happened and why there's so much confusion between everybody is because this was set into motion a long time ago when Chris Watts was three years old. I don't know what the family did. I don't know what happened. But at that point, I'm seeing the energy split. Now, when I talk about split, the natural energy that people have, children have as they grow, and their connection to source, this was split. Chris became altered in his view of what was around him, his perception, a hypnotic state, and I'm actually getting that. So what happens when someone commits a murder and they don't understand their true motives for it, whether they be what we call self-deluded, spiritually deluded, spiritually controlled and bound, which I believe is what happened. Shanann, what I'm getting is that she allowed herself as a soul, not as a human, because she doesn't probably have memory of this, but she allowed herself to work the karma out. I can tell you at the moment when I see them, they are all still a family on the other side, the girls, Shanann and baby Nico, who is out and sitting on her lap. That's where I flash to it. I feel like she wants people to know she's okay. She definitely crossed over and she was not in any um, no matter what they say happened to her, she didn't, there's no recollection of that. There's no recollection. Not with the girls, not with her, not with Nico. Nico was her protection. Because he was with her, she couldn't be overtaken. I almost feel like the reason the baby was in utero is the other side that murdered her wanted it to be like a sacrifice of sorts. The two innocent baby daughters and then the baby in utero, sacrificial. But because the utero, the little boy in there was actually of protection, none of that happened. So what they tried to do wasn't accomplished. It wasn't accomplished. And that's the confusion right now between the families. Obviously the families lose their daughter on this side, their grandkids and everybody. Horrific, horrific. I can't think of anything worse to have your family murdered by the person that is your son-in-law that you're supposed to trust in your family. You married your daughter and you have this nonsense. By the way, Chris was very jealous of his wife's ability and her, her, personality. She was like a type A personality from what I'm seeing. She says that a lot. Um, she was very um, aggressive and like focus. If I keep focusing, I'll be successful. Focus, focus, focus. So she wasn't always the most um, uh, weak, I guess, or feminine. She just was after stuff, after stuff, after stuff. So she was a person who was able to... Um, really put herself into high gear. So the kids, she would scoop them up. They'd all go to whatever they were doing. She could dress them. She could go to work. She could talk on the phone. She could, you know, videotape stuff. She could sell, do more sales. She was very type A personality and people didn't like her for that. But there was a genuineness about her and she genuinely loved her marriage and her kids. If I could say there, the one mistake she made obviously was marrying her husband and not seeing him for what he was. I feel very strongly that Shanann was very empathic even being a type A personality, she was extremely empathic with an attachment disorder and an abandonment issue. And so Chris triggered that for her. So she felt the more type I, type A I am and the more over accomplished I am, he will come to me. That wasn't the case because he was coming at it from an entirely different perspective and more of an evil perspective and more from a dissociative, I 
going to bring that home. He was not in his body. This is a family that practiced a religion on some level where the element of the human being, people don't understand that it's not taught in churches. We don't go to Catholic church or, or Protestant church or Anglican church or temple and or Buddhist temple, Jewish temple, whichever. And we are never taught that there are other religions that a lot of people practice, which are more along, you know, the ritualization in the negative sense and basically utilizing energy around the human being to come into the human being's space and to help them live in this life. So a lot of times we think everybody's going to think like us. Of course, people are decent and human beings are human beings, but we don't even allow for the existence of the fact that sometimes human beings aren't human beings. And sometimes their behavior outside of the physical is not them. They're pushed out. So it's like having... Um, a closet full of clothes, right? And you wanna make room. So you throw out three shoe boxes at the far end of your closet. I'm speaking in my closet now. <laughs> you throw out sh three shoe boxes and you shove in um, a duffel bag full of clothes. Well, then the closet becomes about the duffel bag full of clothes, not the shoes that were natural in the closet. Most serial killers, and I consider Chris Watts to be a serial killer because obviously he killed four people, okay? So that's a serial killer. It's not like just a, a crime of passion. This was planned out, but it was planned out because his mistress energetically, so there were things that were being played out on the astral level. So Chris was picking up on things. Nikki, the mistress, was picking up on things, and there was a big ritual performed utilizing his wife, his daughters, and the baby. This is what I'm trying to say. A lot of serial killers, as I started to say, are not in their body at all when they're committing crimes. They are outside of their body. When I look at their energy, they're here and something else is here. Call it an entity, call it an alien, call it craziness, call it... Um, Schizophrenia, I don't care what you call it, but it's not of the human form. And the way that that happens is when family members bring in children, bring in energies, and they practice this in their family home. Nobody's talking about it, but that's what I feel was going on in this particular family. I'm talking about Chris Watts' family. Shanann was a mirror for it because remember, on earth, wherever there is will say the opposite of God. <laughs> Try not to say it on YouTube. It's driving me crazy. The opposite of God. God always sends his in to work with the opposite. So Shanann was the mirror for Chris's behavior, but he wasn't grounded in himself. And there was a binding contract between them. And I'm seeing that. So she's free now. He's not free. Granted, he's only on earth and it doesn't bring back those kids and he's locked up. That wouldn't be enough for me. Like if I was her family, that wouldn't be enough for me. I don't know what would be enough, but not for me to decide. But that's the beginning of like what I was picking up on this particular murder. Okay, so that is my video on this particular family and the unfortunate circumstances. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.